Welcome to the second video of Functional Justin. And uh, last time we talked about some new features in Scala 3, including context functions. And uh, this time we're going to look at um, boring old type classes implemented using Scala 2, or in other words, features that were available before Scala 3. So type classes, we're going to talk about what are they. Um, we're going to make one of our own and then we're going to implement some instances of the type class. So what is a type class? Essentially it's um, a trait with no state and we're going to re we're going to add some functions to that trait. Um, it's going to have one or more type parameters and it's going to have mostly abstract methods and then it's going to have methods uh, based on those abstract methods. So that probably all sounds a bit abstract but Essentially, type classes give us a way to describe a behavior um, for a data type. And the data type might be one that we don't control because it's in a library or something like that. So we can make um, functions that are polymorphic based on the data type uh, just by implementing instances of that type class for the data type. Uh, finally, before we get started on the coding, uh, we can talk about coherence. So type class coherence means that you should only have one implementation of um, the type class for each data type. So you shouldn't be able to change which inputs you use and change the behavior of the program because that can cause confusion. Um, in general, if you change the constraints of a function, it shouldn't change the way the function behaves because uh, it makes it impossible to reason about your program. So let's see a practical example of a type class. So we're going to implement the numeric type class, which is something you'll find in the Scala standard library, just as an example because it's uh, small enough to code it up in 10 minutes, but it's also interesting enough that we can do something with it. So what we'll do is we'll write the numeric type class and then use it in my expression evaluator from last week's video so that we can work with more numbers than just integers, just, uh, just Scala ints anyway. So what is a type class? Um, it's something that has a type parameter and it's usually defined in Scala as a trait. And the trait itself describes the interface for the type class. So it describes the kind of behaviors that the type class can do. And the parameter t describes the type of thing that we're going to do the thing on. Right. So once we've defined the type class interface, we can then define instances of that type class that we can then use in our programs. So then we're going to add the um, add function. So this gives us the ability to add numerics together. And this is something that the expression evaluator needed. And the other thing it needed was multiply, because we didn't really add a lot of different uh, arithmetic operators. So these are examples of type class methods. So every instance of the type class will have to implement these because these are abstract, right? They don't have an implementation. And another thing that type classes may have is generalized methods. So things that use the uh, provided uh, abstract functions to derive more interesting functions. So for example, we could make a square function um, that just takes a numeric and returns a numeric and just simply uh, multiplies the number with itself. And um, so that means that any numeric that we define, even though we've only told it how to add and multiply, uh, it can square itself because we're going to, because we were able to derive that from the uh, methods that the user provides. All right, so the next thing we want to do is make an instance of the type class. So we'll implement integer first. So in order to do that, we're just going to make a uh, int numeric. And it's going to have type numeric for type int, specialized for int. And we can create it like this. And then in here, we have to provide implementations of all the functions that we need. Um, 
So let's just copy them. And we're specializing for type T, so we're going to replace all of the T's with int. And the add is going to be just add like that, straightforward. And multiply will be the same. So now we have the ability to use our numeric to do some arithmetic. So let's say we wanted to write a function that works with numerics and not just integers but any numeric we can think of. So let's make a function and we'll call it um, sum list and we'll give it the ability to add the numerics in a list together. So the input parameter is just a list of type t, um, which is going to be a parameter, a parameter for this function. And then we're going to also need in scope an implicit value of type numeric for for type t, right? So numeric specialized for type t, and this is going to return a type t. Um, so what this function will need to do is just do a, a fold. Um, or rather we can just reduce over the over the list and we're going to take each value and add them together using the numeric um, and before we need that to, before we can do that we need to import the numeric So there we go. Now if we make a simple list of numbers, and then we can get the sum of that list using our new function. And then we can print the sum of the list. Okay, so we can go ahead and run that. And you can see the sum of the int list is 10. Okay, and just to demonstrate that we can do more interesting things, how about we make our new number type, which is made of strings. And this may not be of any practical use, but it's interesting just to show you that you can do it. So let's see, adding two strings together, we can we can just use the plus function still, that works. And then to multiply two strings, to multiply two strings, we can use a for comprehension perhaps. So we're going to take each element of the um, first string and each element of the second string and then we'll compose a string that is basically adding both of those together. Then we'll return s. We don't need that second bracket. Let me see. I'm programming this in the wrong place. So I'm just going to move that. So this should go back to what it was. There we go. So now we have the ability to add and multiply strings. It looks like I might have messed up the braces somewhere. So that one ends there. Okay, so that's fine. And now what we're going to do is just take this example and do it with lists instead. So or in fact what might be easier to see is I'll just take two strings and multiply them
So I'm just going to explicitly use this implicit to do this. And then when we run it, you'll see that it can multiply the two strings together. Um, let's use the actual multiply function. And then we'll print the product as well. So you can see the product there is what you'd expect. It's the sort of cross product of the two strings. All right, so we've specialized numeric to do arithmetic with strings, uh, treating, roughly speaking, the number of characters in the string as the value of the string. Um, cool, okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is um, a, a syntax so that we can change we can change this kind of um, syntax into a more readable syntax. So what we're going to do is um, add a uh, operations object. We'll just call it ops. And um, the common thing with type classes is to add operations to the type class, which just gives you a better syntax to work with. So you can take some take some uh, instance of type T and automatically uh, turn it into an instance of type T that's embellished with certain operators that are useful. So what we're going to do is make a implicit conversion um, and we'll call it numeric ops. And again, this is going to be parameterized in type T and what it does is takes an instance of type T and an implicit numeric, which we'll call numeric of type T, and it returns a class with these operators inside it. So we would like to take the add function, and the add function will take the A from our input here, and it will add it to a parameter B, and um, the way that will work is it will call the numeric and then it will call add A and B. And we can do the same with multiply. So now what we can do is as well as importing the numeric type class, we're also going to import the ops so that that's in scope. And now this syntax down here becomes a lot better because um, we can just do s1 and then it has the multiply operator on it. And then um, we can pass the parameter s2. And then just compile and run that. I can see that it still works. Um, some list could do the same thing. So if we wanted to, we could now do a add b. I have too many brackets, or not enough. And you know that works the same way. Now one last thing we'll change here is as well as the um, add and plus operates ops or operators, whatever you want to call them, we can also use symbolic operators because that's what I'm using in my expression evaluator and it would be nice to be able to use them here. So we can either just copy the code here or we can uh, utilize the existing code. Um, it's up to you whether you don't want to repeat yourself or if you'd rather it would be more efficient. Uh, this, this example doesn't really make much difference. Alright, so now if we wanted to, we could change this to um, A plus B. So it's essentially back to how we started. 
and I deleted the brackets again. There we go. And then this one could be S1 times S2. And just run that, make sure it all works. And that looks good. All right. So now we have our scalar to numeric. And the next step will be to use that in our evaluation function.